Hello, this is Emma. I hope you're doing really well. This is a Q&A video. A little midweek extra special for you. I put out a question on Instagram stories a couple of days ago and lots and lots of questions have come in, really, really good ones as well. It's the best set of questions I've ever had for a Q&A, so I'm really looking forward to this one. I have a hot drink to hand. I've got coffee today, which is unusual for me, and some hand cream, as usual, and some Tisserand aromatherapy rollerball. I have these things lying around often. And this stuff, which is quite nice, it's a hot space mist, and you spray it and then walk into it. It's passion flower and rosewood. Being guided through life from your heart will provide you with a life of more than you can ever imagine. Smells good. Made in Australia. And I have a lipstick and a lip gloss. This is a double uh, lipstick and lip gloss by Tarte. It's called Lip Sculptor. Gloss on this end. And Lipstick on this one. As you can see, it's quite new. It's from the box that Todd sent me ages ago. And it's in a treat. It's a nice colour. So we're good to go. I have extra coffee in here as well. Because you know this is a long video. Keeps it warm. I wanted to show you these first before I start. So I was inside feeding the cats earlier and the postman arrived and there was a parcel and I knew I hadn't ordered anything to arrive today but this was a gift from my friend Jo and uh, it really made me laugh so I thought I'd show it to you as well. We've been working together a lot lately and uh, Speaking a lot, she saw these and she said, uh, I couldn't not get them for you. The Pocket Book of RuPaul Wisdom. Witty quotes and wise words from a drag superstar. In this collection of her best quotes, Ru shows off her charisma, uniqueness, nerve and talent. Full of insights into culture, life and love, this book is perfect for drag race fans and anyone seeking wisdom from the ultimate queer icon. I really, uh, really, really like RuPaul's Drag Race and I love RuPaul. So this is a perfect book for me. Quotes on love. If you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? Love drag, love queens, love people who dance to their own drum. True. Oh, I think that sweetness and kindness are at the top of my list of human virtues. I'm going to have a really good look through that later. And she wrapped them in tissue paper because she knows. And this one really made me laugh. I think you're going to like this one as well. The joy of bathing with Bob Ross. It's a soap. 
Make some happy little clouds of foam. This vegetable soap is made with glycerin, sheer butter and cocoa butter. Come to think of it, there's olive oil, grapeseed oil and fragrance. Every day's a good day to be alive with exfoliating oatmeal. It's so important to do something every day that will make you bubbly. The Bob Ross name and Bob Ross images are registered trademarks of Bob Ross Inc. Amazing. Foam, sweet foam. Let's get a little crazy here. The Bob Ross wet on wet technique. Maybe I'll make a video with it. Maybe we can just get foamy with Bob Ross together. Okay, let's get to the questions. There are tons and tons of them. So rather than go into too much de depth about each one, I'll try and get through as many as I possibly can. That might be quite difficult, but I'll do my best. Um, the first one is, Emma, you are so calm and balanced. Do you ever get angry? And that's from Micromundo in Barcelona, who are a really cool company. Uh, furniture and installations and uh, out of ceramics and wood so check them out micro mundo barcelona uh yes of course i'm human and i do get angry i do not like injustice and that makes me angry um and i'm also a mom and have to be a mom at times uh and you know what that entails so yes I do get angry when it's required and when it's a useful tool for um, getting things done or um, for the right reasons, for the right results. Um, I get overwhelmed as well because I'm super sensitive so there's the other side of being angry which is just completely um, losing it a little bit because you're overwhelmed I get overstimulated and I just um, start um, getting upset about the something ridiculous like there's something's fallen over or whatever not in a, a really horrible way but you know just like oh and that's when everyone at home just realizes that mum's exhausted and now we'll probably say just go upstairs and I'll make you a cup of tea or something like that. And um, that's usually what's required to calm me down. I'm quite um, a balanced person. Um, Karuna Sartori ASMR says, what do you see ASMR becoming in the future? And this is a very common question all the way through in different ways. Um, uh, where do you see ASMR in 10 years time? What would you like the future of ASMR to be? So I'll answer it all now. Um, it is what we make it. It is what it is already. It exists and it always has existed. But where it goes in the future and what we do with it is down to us. Um, I've always tried to, I know that no matter what, it's going to be used, shall we say, in different ways by different groups of people. So I've always tried to represent it in um, the purest and um, most authentic way. I know how, and I know that it's going to be famous in some way, shape or form. So I... My aim is always to steer it in a in a wholesome direction and the direction I feel that it should be going in anyway. Um, I'm sure not everybody gets it right all the time and I'm not saying I'm the one to get it right all the time but whilst I'm here I would like to put all my energy into doing the best job that I can. So I've done the live events set those up and now they're becoming more popular so I'll let you know what's happening for next year and that's now a thing um, I've been talking about a retreat center for a long time 
that's going to take money so I've taken steps in the meantime to do something that builds up to that which I'm working on now and I'll be able to talk about in January I think so I'll tell you about that then um, I just think it'll always exist online via video form because the videos have become a technique all of their own and a delivery method of ASMR all on their own and ASMR before the videos always existed in in day-to-day um, -day life so it's a matter of harnessing that and uh, using it for good to um, help people relax as a therapy a complementary therapy so my aim is for ASMR to become a complementary therapy through all different forms through uh, group sessions through live events through meetups through obviously the videos um, through one-to-one -one sessions and um, all kinds of different things and I'm working on it every day when you see me not filming or not uploading a video, it's because I'm doing something else with ASMR in the background, something that's not necessarily um, for the channel or a video. It's something else. I don't stop at all, ever. Um, I finished work about five o'clock Monday, and my friend was there and she said, I said, I think I'm going to finish now. She said, sorry, what? <laughs> I think I'm going to finish and have the night off. And uh, she, she was just laughing at me. She said, what, is it Christmas Day or something? Because <laughs> she knows that's what I'm like. Um, my day off is Christmas Day and Boxing Day. And I'll still, I'll still look at my phone. Okay. Uh, do you see a time when ASMR will be a part of the school national curriculum? And that's from Byron Murphy 8. Hello. Uh, well, ASMR has been part of school life for as long as we can remember, hasn't it? And meditation is fairly common in schools these days. Um, there is, in this country, a programme that's taken up by a few primary schools where the children have brain breaks and meditation little meditation sessions so that's happening so we're moving towards more understanding that there needs to be more balance in our daily lives and teaching that to our children um, but as we know children have been soothing each other with hair play and back drawing and playground games for ages and it's just I think what will happen is it will just be that teachers are more aware of what's happening when children do that rather than telling them to stop helicopter telling them to stop um, touching each other or stop playing with her hair or it would just be more acknowledged that that's actually um, not a bad thing as long as they're not misbehaving and running around you know we used to listen to the story, sort of teach a read a story and just have um, each other play with each other's hair. And uh, eventually we were told to stop, but there's no reason why that couldn't carry on because you're listening and you're, you're um, in the moment and you're having the brain break. So let's see. Um, good looking objects. She makes the most amazing jewellery if you've ever seen me wearing a hand silver hand she makes that um I have, a, I have a silver gate that she made um and the tea time ring that's hers as well good looking objects i'll put these links in the description um my question is will you sing something jazzy for at least 10 seconds so she's been telling me to uh sing on instagram again something jazzy so, um, 10 seconds, that's not very long, is it? Okay, I have to stop smiling. <clears throat> and I feel a little bit like 
Um, you know, when you're at your family's house and they all ask you to sing and then you don't want to, or they ask you to perform or tell a joke or do that funny thing that you always do when you're little and you don't want to do it. That feeling's not that strong anymore, but it's still a little bit there. <laughs> okay. Stop smiling. Never know how much I love you. Never know how much I care When you put your arms around me I get a fever that's so hard to bear You give me fever I can't sing it properly because I'm smiling too much But there, that's your jazzy thing for at least 10 seconds Will there be Jennifer says Our Jennifer who comments all the time Lovely Jennifer Will there be any upcoming videos on your children's channel and your vlog channel? Um, the children's channel, yes, because I made them for... Last year I made a, um, a series of them for the channel, which is allowed now. I don't know if you know about the copper um, law that's been coming in that we need to deal with. That channel is now listed as made for children. Uh, so it won't ever earn any um, income, but it was never for that anyway. I'll upload more videos to that, and then the main thing is for them to then go on to Spotify. So that's why they're there, and then they go into Spotify. So yes, there'll be another series, and then the vlog channel, yes. So this year has been super crazy busy with all kinds of different things, and I've filmed everything that I've done. Um, most of it's to do with recording the album, so I didn't want to put all of that up uh, what, till that's out. Um, and yeah, there will be. I've got lots of footage. I've just been busy doing the book and, and trying to keep videos on the channel and things, which I haven't been very successful at. Um, I've done a podcast this year. I've done... Um, I can't remember, it's just been just busy all the time and oh, loads of uh, interviews and things and people coming around to film for documentaries and the news and take pictures and it's all stuff in the background that um, people who watch the channel only would never know so they must think I'm so lazy. <laughs> um, and... Miss Original Whispering Life, ladies and gentlemen. She's here with two questions. If you don't know who Whispering Life is, I wrote about her in, in the book, of course, because she made the first ever whisper video back in 2009. Um, she was the brave girl who decided that it was a good idea to make people feel the tingles on a video. That was her little invention. Um, and she's just popped back in for a bit. Um, now we've chatted every now and again over the years. She's, she's so lovely. And she says, do you ever lose the ability to experience ASMR for periods of time? And it never, it's never a hundred percent gone away. Um, but it, it's just very, very light. It's like a, it's there, but it's not much. And if I switch up to a different sound or switch up to a different creator or just take a break, then it comes back stronger. But I do remember when I first discovered videos, how strong it was. Um, it was crazy strong and I've never had it all the way through my body that strong ever since from a video. It That probably lasted about maybe a year and then it started to just be a nice creeping feeling around my head. But what I've never ever lost and it's never um, dissipated, if that's the word, is real life in, in person tingles, never. And someone playing with my hair, drawing letters on my back, um, all of those things, all of those triggers, they always give me tingles all the way down to my ankles. It's amazing. All the way down to my feet. Um, so that's quite interesting to me. 
And then she said, are you doing another live meetup anytime soon? And if so, can I come? <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course, you've always been invited. So it seems like you're ready for it now. Thank you. Um, yes. Um, so we need to do another event in the UK, that's for sure. And I've had lots of questions, requests for another event in London or, or somewhere else. I've, I've done an event in London and one in Birmingham. Um, yes, it will happen at some point. Um, or we could just meet up and have coffee together and just invite everybody. You know, it doesn't have to be a massive event or it can just be in two months time we're all going to be in this cafe at this time and just see who comes you know those are nice things to do we used to do that in the early days of the asmr community okay let's see uh this stuff is golden she is a blog a blogger um what is the big turning point in your asmr career wow career is a big word Thank you for saying ASMR is a career. I d still don't think of it as a career, but uh, it's nice to think of it that way as well. Um, uh, in my AS turning point in my ASMR life, let's say, um, I think the biggest thing has just been finding the videos in the first place, because I don't see what I'm doing as a career or like I'm trying to do anything that's for myself I'm not really involved in it if that's make if that makes sense I'm just kind of a um a vessel for something um that's how I see it if I I've got a lot of fight in me for ASMR and a lot of ambition let's say and drive in me to do new things but I'm also the sort of person who, if a friend comes to me with a problem, I've got all the answers and I always know where they need to go and what they need to do and how they can improve and, and the answers to how they can have this great, wonderful life that they want. Um, and I can help them with that and I can really fight for them and do what they need as long as it's not too much about me. And so I've managed to work this into my ASMR uh, life and um, I don't feel like I'm fighting for myself I feel like I'm laying the foundation for someone else and for um, something else that can come after me and, um, and because ASMR has been so misunderstood for so long I feel like um, there hasn't always been someone uh, especially this side of the world, to explain it in a way that I would be happy with them explaining it on my behalf. So, um, and because I'm a mum, this is why it's so important to me as well. I don't want my children to go to school and say, and hear people say to them, which has happened in the past, oh, your mum does that weird thing, or your mum does porn or whatever, you know? So... I'm always fighting for something else or striving towards something else, not not for my own career growth, you know? So it's kind of bigger than that. Um, what do you want the biggest news headline of 2020 to be? <laughs> well, um, I'm a HSP empath, INFP, personality type, so wouldn't it be um, uh, world peace arrives January, January, <laughs> but um, well the whole world's gone, uh, mo the majority of the world have decided to um, stop eating animals and stop uh, drinking their, drinking the cow's milk that's meant for their babies, let's put it that way. Um, but that's probably not going to happen, is it? But uh, that's a very good question. And I did say on Insta Stories, challenge me, and that's a challenge. But I think, I think I've answered it. That's what I would like the headline to be. Um, 
what is your favourite Christmas tradition with your family? So we spend it just together on our own. Um, that suits us better. We, we don't feel obliged to go to anyone's house anymore and uh, do all of that stuff. Um, so we do our own thing. We uh, have our dinner, so our Christmas dinner is probably the favourite tradition. And um, then we watch Star Wars together. So that's a big tradition, is watching Star Wars together. But the most, the, the biggest thing that we do is just hang out together and that's our family tradition. And uh, that's my favourite thing about it, is that it's a, it's a day where nothing has to be done, no one's waiting for anything, no emails have to be answered, no, uh, no one has to go to school and hand in any homework or anything like that. A uh, phone doesn't even ha have to be answered. Uh, so our tradition is just to be together and be relaxed. And that's my favourite thing. And that was from uh, Patsy. Patsy L. And the 2020 headline was Lana Doll. So thank you very much. Um, from Iragabrsky. Um, have you have you always been so calm or have you been so relaxed since ASMR? I've always uh, been told that I'm a calm person and easy to talk to and um, easy and comfortable to be around and calming. People have said that to me my whole life. Um, first of all, they said I was quiet. When adults used to say she's very quiet and she's a very good girl. And then when I grew up, I was told that uh, I'm calm and easy to be around. So I guess I've got a calm demeanour. And But with since discovering ASMR and being more connected to who I am and understanding myself a lot more, all the self-discovery that's happened, all the other things that have happened around ASMR with life and learning and being the age I am now, I'm a lot more secure with who I am and I've learned so much that I feel like I have the tools now to, to be more grounded and worry less. So it's all related to ASMR because that kick-started so much for me. So yeah, I'm a calmer person because of ASMR. And Felicia Hashim. Hello Felicia. Any chance we could get a cooking video? I love your making a salad video. Hashtag vegan love. Uh, yes, I was thinking about that yesterday, um, making a, a cooking video because it's been so long. I think because they're not easy to do, they're quite fairly difficult to set up and because I film in the shed it would mean bringing a lot of cooking stuff in. Um, I wouldn't be able to film it in the kitchen, it'd be so loud and people would come through the front door and it's just not worth it. <laughs> Noelle and Lil, do you remember the first ASMR video you ever watched? I don't remember the exact first one that I found. Um, because I found one, listened, skipped through, and just kept skip, skipping through a few. But the one I settled on, um, and I wrote about this as well, is Maria's video where she's chewing um, a sweet for extra sounds, sitting in her bedroom, talking about how to get your tingles back. Very old video of Maria's. And I remember watching that mostly all the way through, and then realizing that she was talking about the tingles and that's what these videos were all about that I was watching. Um, we will roar you. What is your next project? Well, we've kind of touched on that a little bit but um, what makes me uh, smile about this is that you know I'm working on something else because this is, it's me all over, I'm always thinking of um, something else to do 
and you know that I'm going to be doing something else, which is quite nice. Okay. Shelley Gray, 66. Shelley Gray, 66, says, What is your favourite trigger and do your kids both experience ASMR? And there's a lot of what is your favourite trigger. So my favourite trigger from videos is always the voice. So there are lots of voices that I really enjoy. Um, Blue Whisper is one of them. Uh, Somni. Um, loads and loads of them. Soft, uh, soft voices. And I really love the sound of dripping water. I like the crinkly gloves and rain and all the nature sounds, all the gentle nature sounds. Um, and do your kids both experience ASMR? My son does. Uh, his name is Bo and he's the younger one. And the older one, Mia, she doesn't. Anita Darling One. I'm about to be a first time mum this Christmas and wondered your advice for life with a newborn. I feel like it's so long since I had a newborn. Um, and I think being a first time mum is different as well. Yeah. It's such a, it's such a life changing event. Um, and I think the best advice I could give and the best advice I was given was follow your intuition and your own instincts about your own child because there will always be someone to tell you how you should be doing things and especially when you're a first time mum you want to listen to everybody and you think that maybe they know better than you do um, even just down to how to put the nappy on you know sometimes these things are part of the journey and you're just learning how to do them um, and what works best for you so sometimes interference or help isn't that helpful so just trust yourself and trust your own intuition and just listen to yourself um, because you're the mum and you're the best one for your baby and just try and get as much sleep as you possibly can <laughs> They say to you, they always say, sleep when the baby sleeps, um, but I could never do that. I tried, I could never sleep in the day. I wasn't sleeping in the night, and I could never sleep in the day. Because when the baby was asleep, that's when I thought of doing things around the house, or, you know, washing, or whatever it was. Um, yeah, just try and rest as much as you can. Um, I remember with Bo, I, I uh, was breastfeeding him. And I think from that time, the most thing that I remember is just sitting on the sofa holding him. I just spent so much time on the sofa holding him and feeding him and changing nappies. And it was nice. Um, so congratulations. <laughs> the country cat who inspired you to do ASMR. So it was just everybody, all the content creators I saw. Um, it was a small community and it was a friendship group and having a channel was just a way to join that friendship group and to talk about yourself and introduce yourself and connect with people and, and make friends with viewers and that kind of thing. So it was just... Uh, who inspired me was the community and just uh, wanting to be part of it. Um, Lois XX Cooper says, Are you still in contact with the lap dancer you lived with before you met Nam? <laughs> I haven't thought about her for so long. And um, yeah, I did speak about her in my Draw My Life, didn't I? Bless her. We were good friends for a while. I haven't, um, I haven't seen her in years, years and years and years, since Mia was little. 
Um, so when I when I had Mia, I was really young, and the friends that I had were all over London, and they were doing their London thing, as people used to call it then. And um, yeah, I just didn't really have any friends after I had Mia, because everybody was going out and doing their own thing, and they were they didn't have children, so it was just me and. Um, I remember one friend that I had at the time, um, he was lovely and we used to, um, we used to work together and we used to sing and he was like a real musical theatre buff and, um, he was lovely and we used to have such a laugh when we worked and I remember I saw him after I'd had Mia and he said to me, um, oh you're just really different now, you're really mumsy and that got me. I've never forgotten that. Um, he was probably, you know, right, because I did look different. Um, I was exhausted and I was a mum and I just completely dropped myself and put myself to one side and, you know, but that's how it was and that's how it is for most of us. Um, so now I haven't seen her for a long time, but I'm sure she's uh, having a great time. I'm sure she's... Um, She's, she was always a survivor, so I'm sure she's happy. Um, what is your favourite place on earth? Um, it sounds a bit cheesy, but at home with my family and my animals, that's my favourite place on earth. Prachi Dut 75 Do you ever plan to make videos in other languages? Um, I really, really don't think it's a good idea for me to make any videos in other, any other languages because um, I am horrendous at languages. I did become quite good at French at one time because I kind of ran away to Paris when I was a teenager and I somehow developed my French. At the time, I used to do French at school, and then suddenly, I think once you're once you're thrown into a situation, you just have to adapt. And I did quite well, but to be honest, I've forgotten most of it now. So I think we'll leave that idea. Life of Laura vlogs. Do you still hope to one day open a tingle retreat? Absolutely. It might be that I've been looking into it, obviously, for a long time and there are retreat places for sale in different countries. I've been looking in Portugal. Um, so there are retreats, eco-retreats that people give up and sell, um, which would be ideal. I found an ideal one two years ago and I got so excited about it and then realized I would never be able to afford it at the time anyway. Um, but I know that there are some for sale so I know that it's it's there and it can be done um, but then there's the question of people traveling to it um, so I think it might be the best idea to start off by traveling around myself and then um, hopefully one day if I can get some investment and uh, maybe work with another company or something to open one um, it's static for people to travel to and it's deciding where to hold that as well because um, wherever you decide to hold something like that there are people who have to travel a long way and there are people who live nearby so um, you definitely but I'm just not sure how that's happening yet but there somehow over the years things have a habit of just happening um, so I have complete faith that something's going to happen to enable this uh, result. So let's all just keep on manifesting, okay? Mary, Mary Kay Creamers says, are you doing another ASMR live? Question mark, question mark, please. I, in Amsterdam, I'd love to do one in Amsterdam. That would be so cool. Um, yeah, lots of opportunities for ASMR live events coming up. Um, it's a matter of, for me now, trying to pick the right ones that are going to be good for the people going and I'm going to be able to do it myself. So the early ones I 
paid for them all myself, set them up myself, did all the work in the background, either worked with other people do, who, who did everything for free as well, or um, did it myself. Um, but that was just to get it off the ground. So I'm hoping now to work with different uh, brands and festivals to do things, and that's that's happening now. So I shall let you know. But Amsterdam would be a great idea. What did you do for work before ASMR and how did you pick your kids' lovely names? Oh, um, that's all in my draw my life. What work haven't I done, you know? Um, I didn't do so well at school, so I had to survive and do everything I could afterwards. So I've been a chambermaid, I've cleaned, I've done all kinds of different jobs too. Um, I've had a market stall, I've been a market trader. Um, I dressed up as a banana once. I'm not scared of getting my hands dirty, let's put it that way. I'm quite happy to do any work. Um, I'm a hard worker. Jimmy Lee Prankster. Is ASMR your primary job or do you work with anything else on the side? Love you so, so much. Oh, bless your heart. Love you too. Um, it's my primary job now. It, it wasn't for a long, long time because, especially in the early days, no one made money from ASMR videos. Uh, we didn't get lots of views and things that we get now. So, yes, it's become my primary job over time. And so I'm so grateful for that. So I've just uh, aimed to always maximise uh, my time to do other things that aren't necessarily paid, but the channel can support those just to further ASMR and uh, try out new ways of presenting it and delivering it to people. So, yeah. Uh, Penat43 says, what makes you tick? Um, I'm very interested in things that aren't necessarily proven yet. Obviously, I'm an ASMR content creator. Um, so I'm interested in things that other people say are real, but some other people say they're not. And I'm interested in learning about them. Um, amongst other things. That those are one of the things that make me tick. Um, one of them. And uh, Nicole Alvarez, 106, said, um, have you ever done ASMR for children on the autism spectrum? So um, lots of people have given me feedback to say that ASMR videos have been very helpful for their autistic children. Um, especially children's videos that are aimed at more sensory things like kinetic sand, um, cars with wheels to see the movement and that kind of thing. Um, if I was to do one specifically for children on the autism spectrum, then I would feel like I had to make sure that I did a massive amount of research to know exactly what needs to go in that video how to present it and um, if it's going to be effective before I actually labelled it as for the autism spectrum because I'm not trained in that field but so I probably would stay away from that to be honest but lots of people have said that they've picked certain videos because they know that their child would get something something good out of them and used them for them uh, Bugsy said, Mike on the hairbrush video coming soon. I love those. Okay. <laughs> That's been a while. Um, the spicy bug. Do you ever struggle with trying to find your... Did you ever struggle with trying to find your calling in life before ASMR and YouTube? I suppose so, because I always knew I was supposed to be doing something important, uh, but I didn't know what that was. Um... I had this kind of niggling feeling that never really went away that I was supposed to be doing something important and I and it was really confusing but then I don't feel that anymore so that's probably something to do with it um, I became a mum, got married, worked and um, the family was just my 
whole existence and my job. Um, and of course that was fulfilling in its own way, but it never got rid of that feeling either. So that was confusing because I thought, well, how can this not be the, the thing I'm, I'm supposed to be doing, you know? But anyway, that's all in the past. Um, and my feeling um, towards my family obviously has never, never <laughs> uh, decreased since then. It's, um, it's, if anything, it's increased and everything supports everything else. Um, Amy Lola XOX says, will you write another book? book. Um, I'm not sure. I'm still exhausted from the last one and I'm not sure what would go in the second one. So let's see. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard work. It's like being back at school and writing tons of essays. It was hard work. Um, very, very important and I'm very proud that it's done. But it was hard and I'm, so I would definitely think twice about doing it again. And um, maybe take a lot longer over it. <laughs> And April's 517, what is your favourite Christmas movie? And what is your favourite Christmas time food? So we have a vegan Christmas dinner. The whole family, we're all vegan. And um, I think we're going to go for a nut roast this year. And my friend made a uh, mushroom wellington last year. And I think we're going to try that. So we're going to, we've got the recipe and I think we're going to make one of those. Christmas movie, ah, uh, Christmas movie, I think it probably would be Home Alone because that's the one I've seen the most. I remember going to see Santa Claus the movie when I was little and we rarely, rarely went to the cinema um, and my mum took us, I can't remember how old I was, I think maybe it was just me, myself and my sister at that time. And she took us to see Santa Claus the movie. And um, it was just so exciting to me to actually go to the cinema anyway. Um, so it was super special uh, to go there and to see a Christmas movie was really nice. So I have special memories about Santa Claus the movie. But the one I've seen the most is, must be Home Alone. Because I've seen it so many times with the kids. Um, but we always watch Star Wars anyway <laughs> on Christmas we love Star Wars. We love watching Star Wars. Not a question, but I think it's impossible for you to make a video I watch at least a hundred times. Oh, that's kind. Thank you. Um, the Other Bell. Dear Emma, what's your earliest memory of a tingly moment? What kind and at what age? So I think around the age of five is when I started to notice um, the feeling although I do believe we experience it from birth anyway, it's just when we're five, f around four and five, we're more self-aware. Um, I don't remember one particular, I don't remember a first experience, I just remember lots of experiences. The teacher reading a story at school, and um, I remember the headmaster giving a, an assembly once, and... Um, for some reason, he didn't they even usually have a nice voice, but for some reason I got crazy tingles when he was talking about something one day and he was he used to rock on his shoes like this and I was just watching him rocking. <laughs> um, but lots and lots of experiences. Um, can you do more BB videos? I love them. Oh, bless BB. She likes being in videos. Ella, my life in pictures said that. Um, Alice ZZZ who says fave UK city to, tra to live, travel or where do you recommend visit to visit in London so my favourite UK city to travel to is um, my favourite UK city is London um, but there are so many beautiful cities to visit in, in, in the UK and Scotland um, and they're all different um, and historical and lots of beautiful buildings 
I really, I like Exeter, I like um, Cambridge, um, Oxford's quite nice, Bath is very beautiful, Lancaster where I'm from is really, really beautiful, uh, near the Lake District, um, and uh, I really like Glasgow, Edinburgh, I think um, if you're interested in visiting any you should just check out pictures and places to go there and you'll see if it's your thing and a uh, favourite place to go in London would have to be Greenwich where the Greenwich um, Greenwich Park is and the observatory um, there's a beautiful market there and massive park to walk around in and you can see the observatory the Greenwich mean meantime the uh, Meridian Line is there and the Maritime Museum there's so much to do in Greenwich and you can walk walk down the river as well, it's really nice. I always recommend Greenwich to people. H. Helen says, if you could pick any country in the world to move to and you can't say GB, uh, which would you pick? So if I'm not allowed to say England, and if I had to move to any country, um, maybe Thailand, if I had to. Um, Norway looks enticing. Um, there are so many amazing countries and they all have different attributes, shall we say. So I'd have to research that one. But I've been to Thailand, we got married there and uh, it's beautiful. Holly Hedlick, what is your favourite style of ASMR video to do and what is your favourite kind to watch? So favourite video to do, um, probably RPs because they have lots and lots of triggers in them and they have um, lots of use of the voice, either soft spoken or whispered or both and you can mix in so many different techniques if you like into one video. And they're also complicated to make, so they're quite a, a challenge. And you can get quite inventive with the sound and the different um, props that you use. So I really like making role plays. And Rustic Beautiness, Beauty Jess, sorry, Rustic Beauty Jess says, What are your favourite comfort foods? Um, I'm very fortunate that my partner, Nam, makes excellent food his mother taught him well and he has a passion for cooking so he enjoys it which is fabulous and he makes the most amazing noodle soups and he made a really really nice one last night um my favorite is boon um and he always laughs when i say that so i'm obviously saying it completely wrong or he thinks it's funny so boo means boobs and boom is the soup. So you have to make sure you say it right. Um, but he makes uh, lovely, lovely soup and I'm trying to film him making, but uh, there's never a time when I can just casually film him, him doing anything. Somebody will swear, probably him. Um, somebody will come in the front door and start uh, talking about school um, one of the cats will have a fight and something will fall down there's never uh, the perfect time to be doing that so I did say to him one day can we do can I can we set it up properly and you can show us how to make one of your dishes and he agreed so however long that will take I don't know but we'll get there and I'll tell him not to swear <laughs> Did you write the beautiful opening song uh, in Dreamkeeper? It was so lovely. That's so kind. Thank you. And that's by uh, June BMW. Yes, I I um I made it up and uh, hummed it for the opening of Dreamkeeper, and it's called Dreamkeeper. Mm -hmm. And do you dream in colour? That's interesting. Uh, sometimes I dream in colour and sometimes I dream in black and white, but mostly it's colour. Um, I don't know what that means. Maybe I'll look it up now.
That's an interesting question. In the Oceans says, what is your top three life hack as an HSP? What are your top three life hacks as, a, as an a HSP? I think um, um, learning to say no and understanding that when you do say no, even if it hurts you to say no, it still might be the right thing. Because you're empathic, you might be feeling sorry that you've said no because you don't want to hurt the other person, but it doesn't mean that it's wrong. Um, learning boundaries, and which is similar to saying no, um, but just understanding that um, having time on your own is, is important, not just for you, but for everyone else around you as well. So saying no... Um, having time to yourself, rest and recuperation after busy events, that's really important. And the third one would be um, life hack as an HSP. And the third one would be um, just understanding and knowing that everybody's different and they're just people are not everyone is like you and not everyone is going to behave the way that you would and I think once you um, accept that and see that in, in situations that you're in day-to-day -day situations you can understand things better and you can feel less like uh, problems are your fault as well which is a really important lesson to learn as an HSP and that things aren't your responsibility always. Where do you get your inspiration ideas from? Everything is a, everything has a sound. Um, Shooter Official says, Hey, I'm Shooter, a rapper in the UK. Just showing some love. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And thank you. Um, Evely Neil Ack, would you consider to open an ASMR salon for massage therapies, etc. I shall let you know. What is your favourite vegan treat? I'm also vegan. Hello. And that was from Erica Ellen Allen. Favourite vegan treat? I really love Vago bars and the little Vago um, chocolates that are wrapped up individually. Oh, the vegan treat. I love vegan ice cream. Um, vegan treat. I just love, uh, probably the, the ultimate vegan treat is to go out for dinner to a purely vegan restaurant and they have, they have um, an extensive menu. Um, and nice puddings. That would be a vegan treat. What is your favourite sound made by Mother Nature? That would be rain and wind through the trees. If you couldn't do ASMR, what would your career path look like? I have no idea. I'd be doing something um, to raise money for my family because that's what I would have to do. Who knows? If I could choose a career rather than ASMR, probably would have trained in something um, once the kids were older around this time I would be training in something else it would be something along the lines of uh, learning aromatherapy massage um, and some kind of healing therapies which I've um, done sound healing as well so it would be something along those lines um, do you have any words or advice, etc., for someone wanting to start a channel? And that's from Buddy Belly. Hello. Um, and the other question was from Chelsea J. Hello. Um, someone wanting to start a channel. My first advice would be don't go into it because you want to be famous. And don't go into it because you want to make money. Because from my point of view, those things would get in the way of you producing good videos. 
or authentic videos, shall we say. So it would have to be because you love ASMR and you feel like um, you would like to be involved and uh, be in the community and, and that kind of thing. Um, if you do good things, then good things come around for you later. So I think it's good. To, it's important to have the right intention. Um, and then for someone wanting to start a channel practically, it would be um, don't worry too much about the equipment that you have, because um, if you think about it in the early days, all of us started off with just phones and or whatever we could find. Um, just concentrate on trying to provide the best kind of videos that are along the lines of something you enjoy watching so that you can basically create what you would like to watch. Um, and Rebecca Lian um, says, what is your favourite beauty product? So my favourite beauty product at the moment, um, because it's winter, I'm using a, um, a plant-derived squalane, it, do we pronounce it squalane? <laughs> By The Ordinary, uh, with the fire on sometimes and the central heating, I get dry skin and um, I've had it all over the summer but not really used it very much because I didn't feel like it, it was um, needed but um, since it's been cold I've been using it every day and um, my um, skin's really soft, it's shiny and I feel like it's nourished so I'll continue to use that through the winter. I really like using rosehip oil as well, that's really good. Um, but I, I love the Ordinary products, they're fantastic. Um, and then Izzy H. DeSantis, hello, said, what's your favourite ASMR trigger, which we've had. Grace News Cabell said, I love your voice, I could listen to you chat for days, so make it a long one. <laughs> it is a long one, and I'm not really doing a ASMR voice either, because um, I'm talking super fast and much louder than normal and um, uh, there are so many questions to get through that um, if I did it in my ASMR style then well I wouldn't get through the questions would I? It would be hours and hours long. Um, KS and Witch 8 says, and this is an interesting question, what is the biggest obstacle you've had to overcome as an ASM artist? Um, there are surprisingly uh, lots of obstacles. I guess I could talk about this kind of thing all day long, but I won't. Um, and I think the obstacles are different for different people as well because we all handle things in different ways. Um, and I've been doing, I feel like I've been doing this for forever now, it's such a long time. Um, probably one of the biggest obstacles, though it has been a really interesting learning curve and I'm, and I wouldn't change it still, is, um, seeing how the perceptions of ASMR has changed in the media and being one of the people who have been around as as a person to interview when the perception of it was not as favourable as it is now. <laughs> so that's been difficult. I've had to be very brave and very strong and put myself aside a lot to do to get through the, that kind of thing and just be on, keep just really stay on my toes and it's been a very good skill to learn I have to say is talking to the press and just being one step ahead and knowing what it is they're getting at when they ask certain questions and knowing how to navigate those questions effectively. So that's really taught me well. Um, but yeah, probably one of the biggest obstacles is, is, is related to all of that stuff because um, it affects the nerves. Um, 
keeps my mind busy when I should be thinking about videos and uh, takes up lots of time. Saki Zagi Zagiva said, do you recommend ASMR for babies? Thank you, dear. Thank you. Um, I think we instinctively do asmr -y things to our babies anyway, don't we? Stroking their hair, whispering to them, a uh, little stroke on the cheek, cuddles. Those are all asmr -y things. Reading stories and that kind of thing. So I think you mean recommend baby ASMR videos for babies. Probably if I uh, had a baby now, which I won't, <laughs> if I did then... Um, I would I would pick um, a few videos that had nice relaxing sounds in that um, I would play in the background. So I used to have a CD that I played for, I think Mia, when she was... I think I played it for both of them. Um, it was just really relaxing music and uh, that was really lovely th for them to get them off to sleep. So. There wouldn't be a reason why not. You could uh, put a video on in the background, but not for them to watch, just for them to listen to the sound in the room. Um, Morn uh, Tart said, I miss this guy. We broke up. How can I deal with this painful morning? What a shame. Um, are you still kind of connected, aren't you, energetically, if you like to see things that way? So, um, and it depends on the circumstances you broke up as well. So this kind of question and this kind of advice is so much easier to give when you're in front of someone and you can have a conversation about it and you can ask them questions and then bounce off each other in that way and it's so much easier to, um, to give advice. But, um, and I don't know the background of it, do I? How can I deal with this painful morning? I think the first thing is to accept that it's there and not try and fight it. Um, see it as a separate feeling from what's happening here and you maybe feel it here or you feel it here and you observe it and accept it and just sit with it for a while and then see where you want to take it. Um, but understand that it's a process and it's something that we work through um, and you can do it so that's the way I would see that it's very difficult when you break up with someone that you've spent so much time with whether it's for the right reasons or, or, or not you know but we all go through it and life's a journey and these things, these are paths that we have to take so that we can experience the joy on the other side. If we don't experience pain, then we don't feel the fullness of the joy that we feel, um, that we experience at other times. Because we also feel the joy, but we feel grateful for it too. And we savour it more. Jay Holmey said... Uh, you always seem calm and loving to everyone, every, everything around you. Thank you. What frustrates you and how do you deal with it? Um, lots and lots of things frustrate me about the world that we live in. Um, pain, unnecessary pain to others frustrates me to um, to not just people but um, animals children and animals and injustice lies power over others greed all those things frustrate me um, and it's very difficult to deal with at times especially now we're online and we, we get to see uh, videos and images of things happening and um, in real time sometimes and it's very difficult to cope with because we want to make it stop and in that moment we can't always do that so I have hope for the future and um, that gets me through and I what also gets me through is that 
um, I take steps to do things that I feel I can do to help and uh, and and I know that um, if we all do something then it ultimately equates to a big thing so I understand that my small things actually do something quite big in the end my one of my favorite sayings is um, no one can do everything but everyone can do something so if we all do something we're getting there aren't we and I think it's very important for the sensitive people in this world to unite because we are very powerful people. Um, Heva said, um, how do you stay strong after all the struggles you face? I'm struggling to move on. Um... It's not easy. Um, but unless you turn everything to a positive, every negative thing, as much as you possibly can, if you turn it to a positive, then it's not for nothing, is it? So that's the way I manage to um, move on through hard times and I kind of feel empowered that I've been able to to get through so it I feel empowered that it's made me stronger um, and I always tell myself that it's that it's um, for a reason and I'm here to learn and it's a learning process and whatever's going on I'm learning something from it so I have to uh, there's something in me that intrinsically in me that tells me I've got to find the positive and turn it, turn it around and fight and um, make everything worth it in the end. But it's, it's, it's hard, isn't it? But like I said before, it's a journey and we're here to learn, so... There's something in whatever's happening with you now, and I don't know what it is, but there's something there that you're supposed to learn. And I just hope it's not too hard, I'm sorry. Um, Miriam Mella, what would be a dream ASMR video you wish you could do, but don't have the chance or ability to? Uh, so there are lots of weird and wonderful and amazing and extravagant video ideas. There's, there's one in particular I've had, I've wanted to do for years and years and years. I've even, I even gave the, the idea to somebody once and they did it themselves um, to not an ASM artist but a film producer and they um, kind of used me to get the funding for it and then um, took it and uh, did it themselves. I think they offered me a tiny, tiny part that I didn't have time to do. Um, yeah, that was interesting experience, <laughs> and um, yeah, they, I would, I would absolutely love to do a film noir, um, ASMR film because the film noir genre has so many ASMR triggers, but it has to be done really well. Um, so yeah, I would love to do that. I think perhaps I'm getting a bit um, older now and maybe not <laughs> so much bombshell as I um, wish that I could be. I, I'm not sure if I'd be suited as the femme fatale anymore, if I ever was. Riot Girl Creative, hello, says, if you didn't get into ASMR, what other type of art would you have done? Wow, that's a nice question. To see ASMR as an art is really nice. And uh, what kind of art would you have done? Well, I used to want to be a singer. So, um, I, it didn't happen uh, when I was younger. I thought uh, I, was, I was in bands and all sorts. And I thought that uh, at one time I thought we were all going to be famous. But... Uh, 
that was my lesson to know that you should never go into something if you want to be famous because that's not that's not the way to go about it you should uh, want to do it for what it is so that was a good lesson for me and uh, obviously stood me in good stead um, but yeah I'd, I'd, I'd like to sing in a, in a bar or something in a little jazz bar somewhere blues bar or something like that not that I'm the greatest blues singer but you know I have this idea that that would be nice uh, Lindsay McLaurin also if you could only hear one trigger for the rest of your life what what would that be if I could only hear one trigger so if a, so if if a voice is a trigger then it would be different voices I got away, got away around that one. Uh, and Lindsay also said, if you could only perform one trigger for the rest of your life, what would it be? Then it would, it would be my voice, definitely. Because I can do more with it. Um, Jade031, are there any more live events planned? Yes, there are. And uh, I am able to, again, um, talk about that in January. Just because with events, things aren't finalised until it's all booked, so um, it wouldn't be sensible to say just yet. Will you be coming to NYC again soon? I'd love to. I'd love to go to New York again. That's from Rachel Eleanor. Monica Sid Sidib. <laughs> no question, just thank you. Red heart, red heart, red heart. Thank you too. And uh, Kelsey Lou Louise, what is your favourite thing about ASMR? It would have to be community because um, I still think it's magic that we can communicate with people all over the world. It's just crazy, isn't it? And we can all connect. It's just, it's really amazing. Um, Shako Tenlin said, would you ever come to the US and do a kind of tour or something to meet ASMR fans? Well, I have come to the US for events um, a couple of times. And um, yes, I would do it again. Is there anything you miss about living in, Eng in the north of England? Um... In the north of England, time moves slower. Things are quieter, a um, little bit more relaxed. So maybe it's that, if there's anything I miss from the north of England. It's a lovely place. Um, I obviously have family there that I miss too. But, uh, yeah, I can see them, you know, whenever anyway, whenever I want to. But the thing I miss about living in the north of England, yeah, would be just the, um, there's more space there, less noise, and, and it, it's just more relaxing up there. Um, Catherine Yoda said, why did you choose to go vegan? Hmm. Um... I was vegetarian from a lot, for a long, long time, from the age of 18. And I, after I met Nam, uh, a few years into that, I um, fell back and decided that it was okay to try a little bit of fish and, uh, and to start eating chicken. Uh, because the Vietnamese food, there was so much um, meat in it that um, every time I went to his mum's it was a headache to cook for me and uh, that kind of thing and he was making himself dishes at home that I wasn't eating so I ended up just compromising in the end um, when um, I started following vegans on Instagram was a big turning point for me because I could see what they were eating and see what they were posting and their reasons for going vegan and it started to open my eyes about things I just to I was opening my eyes to things I just did not consider before like uh, 
um, what happens to the male chicks, for instance, um, in the egg industry. Um, what happens to the baby cow, um, the calf, when the mother cow has had her calf and she can only produce milk if she's producing babies at the same time. Um, and who's that milk really for? Um, and the way that the dairy industry is run and now run on such a large scale. Um, and then I was learning about the environmental impact. And then I was learning about the impact on our health so I, it was a, it was a, it was a process, and I was just learning about all this stuff. And when I was younger, when I turned vegetarian, it, it was radical then to be a vegetarian. So it's even more radical to be vegan. And the only vegans, people who were vegan, that I had heard of were anarchists at the same time. <laughs> so they were going around being angry at everything. Um, so my impression of vegans then was that they were always angry. Um, but I was seeing a completely different aspect on these Instagram posts and from these activists I was following um, and chefs um, and just general vegan lifestyle people um, and it really opened my eyes and I couldn't believe the food that we, you can eat now. It's so, so different from how it used to be. There is food everywhere for you to eat. You can have, you can veganise anything. So if you... If your favourite dish is lasagna, you can have vegan lasagna. If you love burgers, you can burgers, pies, everything, you know, all the junk food that you like, all the comfort food that you like, all the health food that you like can all is all can all be veganized. And of course the super healthy food is an addition because that's um very healthy vegan food. Um and just going in the supermarket, even creme fraiche, you know, and uh creams and milks and it's just you don't have to you don't have to cause suffering anymore you don't have to um and vegan and a vegan lifestyle is about causing as little suffering as you possibly can so um of course i know that um there's still suffering attached to vegetables because um a lot of people say that uh, oh you you're not really vegan because uh, insects are dying and uh, field mice are dying from the fields that they grow the vegetables in so it's important to know that veganism is about causing as little damage as you can. And, um, and the reason why a lot of people come across as angry as vegan is because it's absolutely heartbreaking when you open your mind and open your eyes to the suffering that you've had your eyes close to for all these years um, because who wants to put themselves through that? Who wants to see a video that you can't unsee? Who wants to see animal cruelty that you can never unsee? I saw a video when I was very little of um, how they make sausages and uh, that really affected me. And uh, I also saw another video of uh, cruelty to um, another animal, which I won't go into, but uh, in testing. And... Uh, yeah, that really affected me as well. I cried for nights after that, and I was only little. Um, and so we close ourselves off to that because we don't want to experience that pain. Um, so it's that's the hardest part about being vegan. It's not changing your diet or your lifestyle. It's not um, listening to your friends tell you how what nonsense it is and come up with really ridiculous um, reasons why you shouldn't be. Because just because they're not educated and they haven't educated themselves they've just picked up on a fact from someone else that they've heard them say it um things like um you can't be vegan because um you're not supposed to be vegan it's unhealthy for you because you can only get b12 from animals well that's not true <laughs> um i won't go into it but you you know once you research and you find out the truth and i don't see that anyone can not be vegan once they've learned the truth but I totally understand how painful it is to find out um yeah it's 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 not been nice but uh at least you know that you're doing the right thing not just for your own health not just for the environment but um 
for the animals. Okay, um, Emily Grace, 1123, not really a question, but I absolutely love your videos and your personality. That's really kind, thank you. When uh, you become an, an ASM artist or just when you put yourself on YouTube, it's so scary because um, I remember thinking, well, how do I have to behave? Because uh, I can't be myself. <laughs> Because no one will, uh, uh, no one will like me, and that will that all happen subconsciously. Um, it's very difficult, um, and there's always someone to tell you you're wrong, or you look stupid, or your hair's wrong, or eyebrows are wrong, or whatever it is. There's always someone to criticise, so you have to focus on the positive, and it's such a nice feeling to know that someone. Uh, feels that connection and uh, and um, connects with your authenticity and is accepted. It's really, really nice. Roosh says, is there a tingle trigger that you absolutely cannot stand? And if so, what is it? Ear eating. Um, and I don't think there's a place for it on YouTube either. I don't think it translates to videos and for someone like myself who spends most of their time um, explaining how ASMR is not sexual or weird, it really doesn't help. But uh, there we are. I understand why anyone would want to make a video like that. Of course I do. And so I don't, I'm not judging anyone. It's just from my point of view, it's hard. And, um, and I don't, um, I really don't enjoy the sound either. I think it's awful. Um, and Markia Man Manalainen also said, describe your typical work day. So my typical work day is um, I start around 9, 9.30. So in the morning, it's kids and cats and dogs and litter trays and uh, messing around and tidying up and, and putting washing on and that kind of thing. Um, and this morning there was a fight and one of the uh, the cat fight and um, one of the pots plant pots got smashed and Nam said his eye was hurting and he needed to bathe it and then Bo couldn't find his shoes because he put them back in the wrong place and chaos always chaos and uh, yes yeah, so I start uh, um, around that time um, open the emails first of all comments if I've uploaded a video the night before and uh, answer some of those and um, answer emails um, they're mostly things that are going on at the moment it's things going on with the book and things happening for next year because I'm already having meetings back and forth and emails back and forth about things that are going on next year um, so that happens and then um, I'll either be editing a video or I'll be setting up for the next one or um, organising um, clips for a Spotify album or uh, doing admin work like um, uh, there's always accounts and things to do um, dealing with stock from the shop um, I'm back and forth with things with the album at the moment as well because we're finishing off the mastering of the songs I've just uh, set up a new website for Whispers Red so I've just been working all that out as well um, there's so much to do and there's so much to do in the background and there's always something else that could be done so um, yeah it's busy and I generally don't finish till my usual working day goes on till about half past ten um, sometimes later if I'm filming, sometimes I don't finish till half eleven, midnight, that kind of time. Um, but I will go in the house when the kids get back from school and, um, we'll have dinner. Um, and then I'll go back to my desk and do some jobs. Um, and then with the book it was 24-7 and then afterwards and I'm still 
emails back and forth about the book as well so there's just my days are just full and every single day is not typical it's different um and then obviously i have days where i'll have someone coming around to interview me as well so i'll do skype interviews sometimes or phone interviews and they're all booked in different times and then uh, the paper will come round here and they always say to me um oh you will only need you for an hour but it's always a long long time so they um they come round and um and do some filming and, and an interview. Yeah, so it's always different. There's always something going on. Okay, just a couple of pages of questions left. So um, I'm going to find the ones that um, I haven't answered before. How do you de-stress de by Instamama68? ASMR videos. Of course. And A. Katerina says, What did you and your husband look like when you, when you guys first met? So I'd just been to a Halloween party. And I think, I think it was, but I had a black long dress on with tassels. And those, do you remember those buffalo boots that the Spice Girls used to wear? They were by the company called Buffalo and they had a shop in Covent Garden in London. I had black ones and they made me taller um, because at the time I was doing promotional work for different companies where you go around handing out free stuff and that kind of thing and work at exhibitions and that sort of thing. And uh, I, w I only wanted to be taller because all the girls who were doing that were taller than me. I'm five foot four, you see. So I added a couple of inches on. So I was wearing those and he was wearing, I think he had his um, coat on with the furry collar at the time and um, jeans and a shirt um, and he looked very swish, he was very handsome um, and I had red lipstick on but it was a little bit smeared because it was the end of the night. Any events coming up in London? To let you know. Um, Celise, it's Elizabeth, 13. Hello. This is fabulous. How do you balance eclectic jewellery and clothing pieces with the modern ones and always look great? <laughs> Thank you very much. I didn't know I was doing that, so I'm very flattered. I actually have a um, a five pound jumper on that I bought when Mia was little. Um, so it's covered in cat hair and um, but it's very bobbly. I've got jeans on with a hole in and um, black converse. I don't know if I can with socks over because it's cold. <laughs> so I'm just living in um, in whatever clothes I find lately and I haven't bought clothes for a long time and I wear the same things over and over again so that's a very kind compliment thank you very much <laughs> um any tips for going vegan yes um any tips for going vegan so I talked about how I went vegan but tips for going vegan in the first week I was quite hungry because I wasn't eating enough so I ate more because you're eating more fiber so it goes through quicker um so more food and um, just go slowly um, don't think it's going to be hard because it will be easier than if, if you just take it one step at a time when you go to the shops just go slowly and you'll start to see things that you'd never noticed before there's a lot in there but you didn't really look at it before because you were going for the same things every time so take your time, look at lots of different recipes, follow people on Instagram like I did and just be um, safe in the knowledge that all the food is there for you. Go and have fun times and go out to um, different places to eat if you can afford to, um, just whenever you can. Um, I'd been vegan for two weeks and then there was a burger stall in Greenwich Market I spoke about before and we all went down there and it's called Vegan Orti and his burgers are amazing and I had one and uh, it was just the most amazing burger 
I'd ever tasted in my whole life and I was so grateful for it and I tasted all of those flavours and I was so um, into the food because I was happy about where it came from and it your taste buds just come alive you start to taste the food in ways you didn't taste it before um, as soon as I got rid of the dairy honestly my life changed so much I was uh, I've since had allergy testing and I was definitely allergic to it although I'm not having it anymore anyway and just try all the different milks don't be disheartened if you come across one that you don't like try a different one because all the brands have different flavors so if you buy an oat milk in one brand and you don't like that that doesn't mean you don't like oat milk it just means you don't like that brand of oat milk and there are different ones you can try um, so try and avoid not spending too much because it's easy to try everything all at once and spend a fortune perhaps you could try things at people's other people's places or when you go out you can try which milk they try they use and that kind of thing and speak to friends go on to um, groups online and chat to them and and find out um, their favorites and you'll you'll work out your own routine in the end you'll get there and it's exciting it's a really cool change and you feel great Just, there are just some really, really nice comments and, um, yeah, saying really nice things. Um, can you make an ASMR advent calendar next year? What a good idea. I shall think about that. Lots of questions about um, going vegan and any advice for that, so I've given my thoughts on that. If comfortable, can you talk about the business of, of YouTube as a job, unexpected challenges, etc. Um, if when you um, when YouTube becomes your job, um, I don't see YouTube as my job. I see an ASM artist as my job because I do lots of other things outside of the channel. Um, but you are beholden to um, an algorithm, and so it's kind of up to YouTube how well you do sometimes. Um, and when you see a channel that doesn't have as many subscribers as another, it doesn't mean that they're not as talented or as good. It probably means they're just not playing the game the same. And, um, or, or they've just been really lucky with the algorithm, or they've tagged onto someone else's channel, or that kind of thing. It's just a game, it's so... yeah. But it's just a good way of us to for us to communicate with each other, you know? So I try not to get involved in the game too much. Um, do you still struggle with friends, parents, neighbours not understanding ASMR and judging you? Um, yeah, well I just said, I spoke of a recent experience but uh, I don't struggle with it because I'm very proud of what I do and uh, part of, um, the, one of the good, good things that comes out of doing ASMR in different places like events, like a book and you're putting ASMR into different environments and different settings where other people think is more acceptable um, so other people think that a book is more legitimate than perhaps a YouTube channel um, other people would think that a live event on a stage with an audience is more legitimate than perhaps a YouTube channel so it's just a uh, good to, to put ASMR in different places for that as well so other people can explain it to their friends and family when I do a live event there are lots of people who bring their partners and their partners say to me afterwards I did not understand this thing that she enjoyed be before or he enjoyed before but now I've been and seen it in the setting I do understand it and it's really opened my eyes so there you go that, that's um so but it no it doesn't um, I, don't, I don't struggle with it anymore <laughs> Luchi Eureka said, um, what are your thoughts on ASMR becoming more mainstream? Um, I think it would always become mainstream in some way, shape or form, and I think I've touched on this before. Um, so as long as, 
there are people around that would have the intention of taking care of it the best way that they know how, then um, I'm happy for it to become mainstream because there are loving people who are guiding it and um, and um, taking care of this beautiful thing that we all experience um, because it means such a lot to a lot of people. So to um, for it to become mainstream can't always be a good thing, but um, it would also be very selfish to share, to not share <laughs> this wonderful thing and not to tell people and awaken people to the to the existence of their tingles and connection with themselves. So it's m way more than just the feeling and the videos and the name and the tingles. It's about self-realization and we're passing this on to other people and they're experiencing self-realization too and then passing it on too. So it's, it's playing its part in, in a, a general awakening of humanity as well. I'd go as far as to say that. <laughs> Um, okay, so I've just read them and most of them are things I've said before, so I won't uh, go through them all. Um, but the last one, and it's really nice, is Flora Ray Bold. Hello, and she said, what's a song that reminds you of Nam? Um, so there's one song that um, I play that reminds me of him and it's called uh, uh, Getting to Know You by or Getting to Know You by Parliament. I love that song that made, reminds me of him. And then there's another one that he plays the Tech House version by uh, uh, Tom and Joyce and it's called La Mina Tristasta. Tristata? Tristasa. Tristasa. La Mina Tristasa. And uh, it's the tech house version of their tune um, and he used to play that all the time when we first got together on his uh, final decks so I really really love that one uh, yeah so those are the two main ones that remind me of him so thank you so much this is such a long video and I'm so sorry if any of the questions were repetitive or boring um, but thank you for joining me on this video and um, I'm now going to go and edit it, edit it, <laughs> edit it and listen to myself all over again and um, chop out any tummy noises and, um, and gaps in between questions. I hope you will and I will see you at the next video. Lots and lots of love and thank you so much for really interesting questions. There were tons of them. Next time I think I'll just put one post up so that I don't upset anyone by not reading out their question. I'm sorry if I missed out yours. I tried to um, just keep to the ones that were asked just once. But all my love and take care and I'll see you soon.